Hi, I'm Mega Server, and in this Tower Defense Simulator Guide, I'm gonna help you get from level 0 to level 30 fast. Get your first team win. Solo win and unlock the Crook Boss Tower. As a bonus, you're going to find out all the skill tips. That will turn you from noob to pro, so let's get started playing games and having fun. First off, when you spawn in the lobby, head over to the survival area, where the elevators are. Whichever elevator people are going in is the one you need to join. This is mainly a team game, and you will definitely need other players to carry you, to start off with. When the game starts, pick Molten Difficulty. This will be your easiest option, to get your first win. You will start with two towers, Scout and Sniper. Scouts go on the ground, and snipers are placed at elevated points on the map. At the start of the game, select the Scout and place it at the entrance, where the enemy spawn. Then place snipers, at elevated positions. Your teammates will appreciate leaving space on the ground for them to place towers. Upgrade your scout and snipers to level 2 to gain hidden detection, ready for wave 13 where hidden enemies appear. Next focus on upgrading snipers to max level. And on the final wave place scouts at the front and upgrade, with enough luck, and a good team. You will win your first ever game. You get 500 coins for a molten win. So now it's time to go and buy your first tower, the demo man for 250. On your way to level 30, you will earn enough coins to get lots of towers. Your second game you're going to be a lot more helpful. Place a demo man at the front and upgrade to level 2. You will need to place a level the sniper to help with hidden detection by wave 13. Demo Man can not directly attack hidden enemies. Only the explosion can indirectly damage hidden enemies. Now upgrade your Demo Man to max level. Then at the front of the map, place and upgrade to max, one at a time. Remember to place all towers as tight as you can to each other, so they don't take up too much space. It can get very easy to fill the map with towers if your placement isn't up to scratch. Continue adding more and more max upgraded Demo Man towers until the end of the game. What makes the Demo Man so good is, it can damage multiple enemies at once within its explosion range, making it 5 times more effective than the Scout Tower. As a result you will be flying through games and leveling up much faster than other new players. For game difficulty, there are 3 modes. This is the part that's a little misleading, it appears as normal, molten and fallen, which seems like easy, regular and hard but most people agree that normal mode is much harder than molten mode, as it only has 30 waves and bring more difficult waves earlier, giving you much less time to prepare and upgrade your towers. Molten is the easiest mode, and also most commonly used for grinding for XP and coins. It has 40 waves, and the more difficult waves are later in the game compared to normal, giving you more time for upgrades to prepare for them waves. You also receive more XP and coins compared to normal, for time played. Fallen is the most difficult mode and also has 40 waves. With all the tips following this guide, then you will be ready for it by the end of this video. It is much harder than Molten. You receive more XP and coins compared to Molten, but it also takes longer. So it doesn't help you to level up or coin grind any faster. For now you just want to be focusing on Molten difficulty. Joining games through one of the elevators. Play maybe 4 or 5 games to collect coins and XP to start leveling up. Most towers are ground-based towers, like Scout, meaning they can only be placed at ground level, the rest are clip towers, like Sniper. They can only be placed at elevated points on the map. Each attacking enemy has three main attributes. First is damage, which is how much the enemy's health is reduced every time you fire, second is fire rate, which is how often you fire at the enemies. Third is range, which is the distance from your tower that can be fired at the enemy. All three are important, it's good to have high damage and fire rate, to get through waves fast, and high range for stronger enemies that slip through your front line of defense. After you have played a total of 4 to 5 games, then you will be getting the hang of the game by now, how and where to place towers, wave income, Higher upgrades mean higher cost. Hidden hordes and bosses, with a higher understanding of the game. It's now time for a higher power tower. Now you will have over 1500 coins. So in the lobby go to your inventory, 
and purchase Ace Pilot for 1500 coins. Ace Pilot does mega high damage. You are now a formidable player. Let's go and test this out. Yes, Ace Pilot will do a lot more damage than previously owned towers, but that comes with higher upgrade cost. So to be able to help with Wave 13 hidden detection, you will still need to place a level to scout. Wave 14, if you have not placed one already, then it's now time to place the Ace. You will notice that the targeting on this tower is very different from other towers, flying in a circle clockwise, traveling with its aim. To make best use of this, make sure you only join maps that have a wraparound path at the start of the map, like this one on screen now. Don't be fooled into thinking this tower can't aim. Even though you're kind of right, the ace pilot will average around 5 times more damage per game compared to Demo Man, and is one of the best towers in Tower Defense Simulator. It costs 500 to place down, so at wave 0 you're able to place one. When first placed at level 0, it will only do 1 damage at a time, but with the first upgrade to level 1 for only 250 cash, it doubles its damage to 2 per shot. Combine this with how rapid the fire rate is, then you have a cheap tower that can easily handle the first few waves. The level to upgrade for 350 cash is where it starts getting really good. At this level range is slightly increased and it can now drop bombs every 4 seconds. The targeting for the bombs is much better, only dropping directly at enemies, so no waste firing. When they land on enemies they explode and damage all enemies nearby. Similar to what the demo man does. The level 3 upgrade costs 1500 cash. This increases damage per shot and per bomb, faster fire rate, and will now travel in its circle a little faster. Level 4 upgrade deals around 50% more damage than the level 3, and level 4 is where you will finally get hidden detection. It takes a lot of time to get this upgrade, but it's worth it. You get a support feature at the start of every wave for 15 seconds. The ace grants hidden detection to all towers within its range of its runway. The level 5 upgrade costs 7,500 and turns the ace pilot into one of the most overpowered towers in the game. Damage almost triples and is now capable of taking out mid to late game bosses and easily defeats large hordes of enemies. It's best to have around 4 level to ace pilots before you try to max upgrade 1 to level 5 when you get your first maxed ace. Then focus on upgrading all to max level one at a time until the end of the game. Now you will be contributing much more in game and will no longer be classed as being carried. Where the path wraps around your ace in the center area. If that space get full of towers and you can't fit any more aces in there, then you will have to resort back to placing max upgraded demo mans at the front until the end of the game. This is a last resort because the ace pilot has far superior damage compared to the demo man most maps have a much better area with a much wider path to place the ace pilot compared to this one on screen now if you can place 10 ace pilots in an area surrounded by the enemy path then the aces will deal almost 2000 damage per second with such huge numbers you see why this is one of the best attacking towers in the game you will need to play four or five games practicing with the ace to get really good with it you will start to understand which upgrades are needed for certain waves of the game, where to place to get most efficiency out of the targeting system, and to start being confident in your abilities. After this you will have enough coins to get your next tower. So let's have a look at the different options, in time you will need a bunch of them, for different challenges and difficulties. There are four main types of towers in the game. First there is towers like Sniper and Scout, that hit one enemy at a time, Normally great for mini-bosses early and mid-game. For defeating final bosses more powerful towers are needed that hit one enemy at a time like Militant and Mini Gunner. Second is towers like Demo Man. That can deal damage to multiple enemies at once through splash damage. Which is great for early waves and hordes of low health enemies at later waves. More powerful splash damage towers are Shotgunner which is great for speed runs and Mortar. Great for high damage needed for more difficult advanced game modes. Next there are support towers. DJ reduces upgrade cost and gives extra range to your towers. Commander increases fire rate of nearby towers, medic which heals stun towers, and many more to suit different gameplay strategies. Support towers usefulness is mainly to buff attacking towers. 
or to negatively affect enemies by slowing them down or reducing their defense. Finally, there's Economy Towers, Farm and Cowboy. You will get farm first. These generate in-game cash. Economy Towers are essential for all players to win more difficulty and advanced game modes. They benefit you by generating enough cash to place more expensive towers and upgrades that will do more damage. The farm will upgrade you into a real powerhouse. That can even solo win while you're still a new player. Now back to your progress. You know now that different towers have different uses in game. The demo man can speed through very early waves. The ace pilot takes out enemies much slower at the start, but does a lot more damage and is much more useful in later waves. You still need to get an economy tower, a support tower and a tower that is better for final bosses. As you can see in this game, there are a lot less towers than the previous one. This win is also a little faster. This is because the towers are capable of higher damage. It's almost impossible at this stage to get all 10 ace pilots at max upgrade. There is two options at this point. To take your game to the next level with the ace pilot and other towers moving forward, there's economy and support. First we're going to go with economy. This will allow us to get all aces at max level, plus plays many more max upgraded towers. After playing 4 or 5 games with the ace pilot, you should now have stacks of cash, over 2000 coins, so in the lobby. Let's look through the towers, and we're going to purchase the farm. 99% of games are played with the farm equipped, and it's 100% needed for all difficult game events and challenges. This game we're going to try solo, I know what you're thinking, but trust me, you can definitely do this now. Place a level 1 demo man to tackle the first few waves. Then place your first ever farm away from the path. In a place you will not want to put any attacking towers. The farm will cost 250 to place and will pay you back 50 at the end of every wave. For the rest of the game, it will take 5 waves to get your money back. Then it's all profit past that point. Your aim is to get 8 farms placed and upgraded to level 3 as fast as possible while you're placing and upgrading farms you will need to defend against the enemy so at wave 7 upgrade your demo man to level 2 this will deal with enemies until wave 10 then you will need to place an ace pilot and upgrade it to level 2 this will be enough to defeat the wave 10 boss the farms will be producing enough cash to pay for the level for upgrade for your ace pilot to get hidden detection at wave 13 to deal with the hidden enemies the level 1 upgrade for your farm will cost 200. This gains an extra 50 income from the farm, totaling 100 payout at the end of every wave. This upgrade takes for waves to pay for itself then get to your earnings. The level to upgrade for your farm is the most cost efficient upgrade, costing 550 and paying back an extra 150 per wave. After 4 waves, you will have 5 to profit. Total payout from your farm is now 250 per wave for a total cost of 1000. Level 3 farm upgrade costs 1000 and pays back an extra 250 per wave. This takes for waves to pay for itself. Total cost of farm now stands at 2000 and pay back 500 per wave. Total cost to pay back ratio is for waves payout to total cost. Level for farm upgrade costs 2500 and pays back an extra 250 per wave. This upgrade takes 10 waves to pay for itself, making it the worst value upgrade for the farm. Total cost is for 1,500. Wave payout is 750, now taking 6 waves to cover total cost. Level 5 upgrade costs 5,000 and pays back an extra 750 per wave. This upgrade takes almost 6 waves to pay for itself, making it the second worst value upgrade. Total cost of farm is now 9,500, with a total payout of 1,500 per wave, making a cost to payout ratio of 6 and a third to cover total cost. You already know, Ace Pilot has a placement limit of 10. With the farm, it has a placement limit of 8. There are many more towers you will notice in time, that also have a placement limit. Level 2 and 3 are the most cost efficient levels to stop farming. You will see that most players stop farming at level 3, if you farm too much, then you risk losing the game by not defending enough. This is quite common with players that like to farm until level 5 max level. 
Another error players make with the farm is upgrading late game. Think about it, if you have 8 waves left in the game, and you upgrade your farm from level 3 to level 4, that upgrade takes 10 waves to pay for itself, meaning you will never get your money back, and you greatly reduce your chances of defeating the final boss. After wave 13, when you get your ace pilot to level 4, to get hidden detection, if you don't have all 8 farms upgraded to level 3, then this is the time to do it. Then focus on getting all 10 aces to max upgrade level, and use all remaining money up to wave 40 to place max demo man towers. Remember not to skip wave 39, as you can see on screen I did this. You don't want to make things difficult for yourself, having to take on the wave 39 mini bosses, and wave 40 final boss at the same time. As a result you will have to remove towers, that the molten boss has passed, and replace further down the path to have a second go at the boss. It will most probably take a few attempts, to win your first solo event, but when you do, give yourself a pat on the back, because you are no longer a noob, you are officially semi-pro. After you have one solo molten, you will now be ready to test Fallen, so cross your fingers and hope for a team of pros. You're gonna need them because Fallen is a lot harder than Molten. With Molten getting much easier now, Fallen will be a lot more fun and exciting, bringing a much bigger challenge. If any players bring DJ or Commander, then you will have a much bigger chance of winning. Also a few strong advanced towers in order to win. In this game on screen now, there was a player that had Ranger, an advanced cliff tower, but there was no DJ or Commander, which lead to a narrow loss at the end of the game. So to boat your chances of winning, you're going to have to get a support tower. Your next tower you will need is Commander. This will boost all your towers, and all other players' towers fire rate by 55%. Fallen mode will be much more manageable, when you're capable of 55% more damage, compared to right now. Commander costs 3,500 coins to get, so if you don't have enough by now, then you will need to grind out a few more games. You first place Commander down mid-game. When there is enough towers down to buff, it will cost 650 to place. At level 0, it gives 10% increased fire rate. Two towers within its range, level 1 is 15%. Level 2 is where it starts to become really valuable. It will still have 15%, but will come with an extra 30% ability for 10 seconds. The ability will have a cool-off period of an extra 20 seconds. Then can be used again, giving a total of 45%. Level 4 gives 20% plus 30% ability. Level 5 is 25% plus ability. As the upgrade levels get higher, so does the range. The real power of the commander is with the chain effect. One commander level 4, and two commanders level 2. So when one 10 second ability runs out, then the next can start, giving a constant 55% buff to all nearby towers. After a few practice games with the commander, then your chances of winning Fallen will be greatly increased, and you will finally start getting wins. At this point, if you still need a few more level ups to get to wave 30, then a few good towers to obtain would be DJ. For discount upgrades and bigger range for your towers, Shotgunner. For speed running games, to level up faster, and Mini Gunner, a powerful boss killer. And if you're already at level 30, then congratulations. And look out for part 2 in this series, guide level 30 to 50. You can see how well you can do on Fallen. With your first 3 towers, Demo Man, Ace Pilot, and Farm, playing with a great team, you will be able to win sometimes. With a few more towers we've talked about, you would have advanced, from the person that needs to be carried, to the one that can carry new players. Start winning Fallen more consistently, and be ready for bigger and greater challenges, more on that in the next guide. For now, you will need to hone in your skills with the farm, and Ace Pilot especially. And when you hit level 30, you will unlock the Crook Boss. You will be amazed at how well this tower performs in-game, it's cost-effective, does high damage, and is a great addition to your loadout, commonly used by the most advanced players in Tower Defense Simulator. This guide has taken over 80 hours to complete. If you have found it helpful, then please consider subscribing, it really helps me out, and supports me to make newer and better content. When you get to level 30, you would have unlocked the Crook Boss. To claim it, go to the lobby and click on Rewards, scroll down to the level 30 badge, 
and click claim. You don't need to pay coins because you've already earned it. By getting to level 30, in your inventory you will now see the Crook Boss Tower. Go and have some fun with this OP tower. Before watching the next guide, thanks for watching.